What's up people, so hold on to your hats because this might take a while. And I remember four years ago I was in the, in the other side with the Democrats. So the question is, what brought me here? Well, obviously, I'm not, I'm not American. I live in the uh, UK for the last 10 years, but I see what's happening around. And um, I've seen what the mainstream media have done for the last four years. And there was no other subject in the world but how bad Donald Trump is. And, you know, I think the Democrats kind of pushed it too far in the sense they pushed the wrong agendas too far. And I'm pretty sure there are many Democrats out there who, you know, they are not really okay with with the party's new, um, new profile. And most of the people are like, you know, we don't care how you live your life. Uh, we don't care how, you know, what you do in your bedroom. But the Democrats, the, the politician, the Democratic politician now, they are, and the mainstream media um, is like, look, it's not enough for you to say, I don't care, I'm not interested in, uh, in that kind of stuff, LGBTQ or, you know, this kind of... Uh, no, you have to say you like it, you approve it, and you're going to back it. If you don't say that, then you're uh, homophobic, you are sexist, you are all the bad names in the in the book. Yeah, so that's really, really annoying because you know what? We're all different. We don't have to like each other. We can tolerate each other. We can make it work and that's probably what we should do and what we are doing, trying to do, that work, at, you know, with our friends. With, but we don't have to go out there and wear, I don't know, wear T-shirts with the rainbows, uh, bandanas with the rainbows and, uh, you know, all kinds of stickers on our cars. And we don't have to do that. Well, for the Democrats today, it looks like if you don't do that, well, you're a, you're a, you're a jerk. You're a scum. You're garbage, you know, like uh, Mr. Biden was saying. And it's not only that, it's like they are trying to and they were trying to push uh, to push this kind of narrative everywhere. And this woke um, generation, so-called woke generation, I don't think there's a woke generation. They are trying to, to create something like that. For me, I don't care how you live, man. I don't care if you're black, white, brown, yellow, whatever. I don't care if you're a... Um, uh, gay, lesbian, uh, I don't know, LGBTQ, trans, whatever, whatever. Do whatever you want with uh, with your life, but don't try to like shove it down our throat every fucking day by your media channels, your politicians, and you know. How about our rights? How about the right to not really get involved in this kind of discussion? And, you know, just do whatever you want with your life, man. No, you have to say it, you like it. And you have to say you approve it. And you have to say that, you know, you're going to back it. Well, no, I don't have to say that. And, you know, that aside, U.S. was absent four years from the international stage. And you can you can say by what's happening uh, what's happening in the world, and I know Trump has like a big mouth, and he's saying, well, if I would have been there, the the Russia Ukraine war never would have never happened. Uh, the the terrorist attacks in Israel would have not happened. It's like those kind of things are, you know, he is saying it, but who knows. If he would have been, probably not. And most of the people don't think. Everyone thinks like, oh, he would have actually managed to stop all this. No, we nobody thinks that. He's saying it. That's his style. That's I mean, in how many ways was he attacked? His health was attacked. Like his uh, life was attacked. 
his freedom was attacked. His family was attacked. His personal life was attacked. You know, it's so hypocritical from Kamala to say, well, uh, this guy is a, is a sexist and, you know, he cheated on his wife and this kind of stuff. Uh, you should not uh, back him. Well, hold a minute. Wait a minute. I think you married a guy who cheated his wife with his nanny. So you backing him. You backing Doug. Dougie. Yeah. So who the fuck are you telling us on the scale of morality who we should back? I mean... Come on, man. And the thing with uh, with the immigration, he he's right. I mean, I'm I'm also an uh, an immigrant. Elon Musk can say uh, he's he was an immigrant. I came in this country and I started working like three weeks. As soon as I got my legal papers in this country, I started I started working regardless of the job. And with the exception of the of the pandemic where I had to stay at home like everyone else, uh, I've worked all the time. Now, we can see what's happening in, in UK as well. Like, there are certain kind of people who are coming to this country illegally, most of them, 90% of them, and they are only trying to take advantage of the system. They never worked a day in, in their lives, and they are here for like three, four years, five years, they stay on benefits, they make as many children as they can, uh, they ask, they're they asking houses from, from the government, you know, council houses, council flats and this kind of stuff. And we end up paying the bills for them as well. And don't, they, they have part-time jobs and they have four, four by fours in front of the council, uh, council tax houses. So like, what kind of justice is that? So, you know, Donald Trump really appealed to, to, the, to the subject, to the subjects that are really important for, for the people. Like money, jobs, security, border security. And I know he's saying a lot of blah, 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 blah. And, you know, I don't know how much he's going to manage to, you know, to, to solve from all that. But we've seen the, the trade market uh, reactions when they found out that, you know, he's really have a, he really has a chance. Everything is fucking up. Everything is up. And you just, man, there are so many things, so many things out there. The way that the system ganged on him. And we don't like that. You know, many times, regular people, they like to support the underdog and Trump was always the underdog and he beat the system twice with Hillary and with Kamala and there's another very annoying agenda and very annoying uh, you know stereotype which is actually I consider to be offensive for women's out there like you know what Kamala <sighs> She's, if, if you think about it, Kamala didn't want anything. I mean, she didn't even want her own right to, to be there in that position. The, the Democrat electors chose Biden. She just had this job handed to her. She didn't uh, uh, got elected by anyone. But, you know, what about the other Democrats who had like the, the, the power to change something or the, the power to look for someone else or just to analyze her and say, you know what is very clear? Probably they thought, you know what? Kamala is uh, black. Well, at least she appears to be black and she's a woman. And I think that's enough because it kind of fits to our agenda. So everyone who will vote against her uh, they will be afraid to be, you know, labeled as uh, anti-feminist and anti-black uh, people. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that the black community will support her. The, um, you know, the, um, what, the Asian community, the Indian community, the, 
uh, Hispanic community with will back her because you know Kamala was of such a huge huge genealogic uh, mix and so extraordinary you know remembers um, I used to to watch a lot of uh, South Park I'm still I'm still watching it and it comes back to an episode where I think Stan's dad uh, finds out that he's like uh, He's like 0.3% Indian Cherokee. And, you know, he was starting to behave like a victim. And another guy, he found out he's 1% uh, black. You know, they did that DNA test and to find out whatever kind of genes you have. And the guy, when he found out that he's 1% black, he started to use the N-word a lot. And he said, okay, now it's okay. I'm safe. I can use it because I'm 1% black. Same thing with fucking Kamala. He had so many like uh, so much dna in her genes like he di she didn't even know what she is anymore she's black she's asian she's asian she's indian she's uh south south american and she, you could see she's so fucking fake she's so fake man and those statements like oh i think we need more wokeness everywhere like this 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 it was becoming like crazy and crazy stupid and you know this is the lesson like don't piss the people off to that point because they will fucking show you and that was not like a narrow victory or this kind of no it was a fucking huge victory popular vote senate uh, house of representatives or how how they call it it's everything so the democrats with their strategies with their fucking agendas they lost fucking everything and also they lost me some some might say you know it's not a big loss you're not a voter you you nobody fine but i'm telling you that kind this kind of agenda this kind of uh, rhetoric is pushing people away it's like today you kind of if even if you want to express your opinion you can't really do it because you know you can't say that because it's racist you can't say that can I say that I don't like everyone I'm pretty sure there are many people out there there are many black people they don't like me can I say I don't necessarily like I don't know Muslims or whatever this is not important man so I work with them. I work with we we try to get along with with everyone. But what I'm trying to say is like, just let's try to get along, and we don't have to like in that sense that CNN is for no. You have to like you have to say you like transgender movement, and you have to wear that you know armband uh, because if you don't wear it, then uh, or you have to kneel. Um, whatever well you have to wear that black lives matter bullshit um, or you have to be pro uh, that thing there are, there are black people who don't support that crap and as someone was saying as soon as you labor as soon as you put a color on something as you already you falling in a in a in a wrong uh, side so yeah, this, there will be like a lot of things to, to, to say, but I'm happy the way it came out. And this is like my kind of like public statement to be out there. And I admit, I was fucking, I was on the, I was with the stupid. I was on the fucking wrong side because the, the propaganda was so fucking huge man, for so many years that when you actually start to, to listen to what the, what the, person is saying and what you know when you really get down to the to the to the matter of facts you realize how much you're being manipulated and you know now a few things about uh, a few things about trump and vance now i watched uh, i watched the joe rogan uh, show and i said i was talking with one of my friends from from work with george um and you know when i saw trump speaking for like three hours on random subjects 
And he did, I mean, he said some stupid things. He said, you know, the, the, the thing with the uh, Afghanistan retreat who was actually, you know, negotiated by him and Pompeo. And they were sitting at the table with the fucking Taliban and all that. I mean, that, that for me, it was a disgraceful fucking image to see Mike Pompeo with the representative of the Taliban yeah, shaking hands and all that. So he said, he said some stupid things, but again, he remained close to, to the people and he had the, you know, he knew what subjects to, to touch and he knew what people were interested in and to be able to keep it up and talk for like three and a half hours without any fucking script without any prompters tv prompters and all that well we would have liked to see kamala doing that oh no i want only 45 minutes because i'm so fucking busy and um specific questions and this kind of crap hey what the fuck is that but also I was very, so after I've seen Trump, I said, you know what, it, it's, it's good. It looked good, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough because not everyone, you know, watches Joe Rogan and, and all that. But when I saw Vance, man, a uh, Joe Rogan, I mean, this guy, if they do well, if they do well this four years, I'm telling you, Vance is going to be a very good option for the future election. I mean, this guy is so, he's, he's sharp like a tank. <laughs> I mean, Vance is really, he's smart, but he's not that kind of smug, smart person. You know, he's not gonna uh, talk down to you. He's not, he, he's smart. He's very articulate. He's, uh, he's savvy about many, many subjects. Uh, he's energetic, he's young, and I think that's that's exactly what the U.S. needs after four years. And hopefully he's going to learn a lot like in terms of uh, external politics and this kind of stuff. And, um, no, yeah, so I said, after I've seen Vance, I said, these guys will, will pull it off. They will win it. If they were as... Um, logical and cerebral and you know if they did so well in the in the campaigns in the states where they they went to campaign they will win it and they did and it was a fucking light slide so what can i say that's my opinion you can judge me for it you can tell me your, your, your opinion you know you can you can tell me why did you vote the way you vote um and you know let's have a discussion man this is all about you know having opinions and not being afraid to to put them out there so thank you for watching see you soon in the next one